Hi guys and welcome to another FIFA 22 video and today guys I thought I'd do a little bit of a tutorial guide video that um, we've done a few times a little bit more this year on the channel compared to previous years and uh, today's video is all around player trades. I was kind of looking on YouTube a little bit earlier and I was noticing that there was actually no videos at all or, or to my knowledge on YouTube that there's no videos at all that explain what player traits are specifically an ultimate team and how they can benefit or how they can... Uh, hinder uh, a player in ultimate team with the traits that they carry now with the majority of cards whether they you know come as SBCs, just come into packs or whatever most of those cards will carry player traits some of them are ai traits some of them are traits that are actually controlled by a human depending on what you do when using them in game as you can see in the background this is my current team that i have got potential changes to be made maybe trying to get like an edda miller tau card in place of diego cards and stuff like that but for the most part this is my main team and a lot of the players that you see on the screen here are going to have very various player traits i'm going to talk about how these traits will impact certain players what traits are going to be good to have on certain cards and what traits you might kind of want to avoid on certain cards but first of all before we go any further there are four different categories for traits in ultimate team but one of them is in volta game mode um which we won't really go into too much because i don't think anyone plays that game but that basically impacts a player uh in volta game mode if they carry a certain trait that, that impacts them when being used by a player or by the ai in game uh, career mode also has uh, player traits that will impact a career uh, that will impact a player in career mode but won't actual affect them during gameplay and then there are the two interesting ones that concern us during ultimate team the ai traits and then the standard traits so first of all standard traits are uh, traits that are impacted uh, on how a player uses them when controlled in game so you know um, people like me using them people like yourselves watching them and then you also have the cpu traits which impact a player only when being controlled by the ai so a lot of the time that you're ever going to and, and the only time that you're ever going to really see that when playing ultimate team is during squad battles uh, apart from that there's no other game where, no other game mode in, in, in ultimate team where you are coming up against the ai maybe in friendlies is the other time where you can go and choose to play offline but um of course said uh, the majority of you guys when you ever go into a friendlies game the chances are you're going to be coming up against again another uh, actual human playing the game but uh, let's have a look for our team let's talk about some of the player traits and also go into detail about uh, some of the standard player traits some of the cpu traits as well or mainly specifically the standard traits because the cpu traits we don't really need to know about too much because you're going to games of division rivals uh you know foot drafts uh, live friendlies foot champs the, the CPU traits just don't matter, so they don't mean anything to you. So uh, let's go and have a look at team. Let's let's choose, for example, Pierre Mkobomiang's player moments. When we go to the player traits, he has got quite a few player traits, and he's got speed dribbler and chip shot, which will benefit him. Uh, when being controlled by the AI, it will make no difference when I'm using him in game. However, there are three other traits that are going to impact how I use him. So depending on how I use him. These certain player traits will impact the player. Outside foot shot, finesse shot, and solid player. So let's talk about the finesse shot trait first. This is a very good trait to have on attackers. And it should always, when you're having a look at SBCs, it is always good. It's not always a necessity. I don't feel like player traits make a player necessarily too bad. I think player traits only really ever hinder goalkeepers. And I'll explain that in a second about one of the player traits that I did find. But with finesse shots, it does improve a player. And it really helps attacking players because, first of all, they're more likely to carry out those traits. Not every striker or not every attacking player does have these traits. But if they do have them, it does make them stand out a little bit more from the crowd. Not as much as like having a five a week but of course that's a fantastic thing to have to a card Aubameyang has got four so week four which still isn't too bad but by having this finesse shot trait this basically means that um when using the finesse shot traits, uh, they will get the full amount of kale when taking a finesse shot uh, this can change how the ball will get to the target but it won't affect hitting the target itself basically what it means is by being able to you know increase the amount of kill on a finesse shot that you take there's more of a chance that when you take finesse shots with these players that the ball is likely to go into the back of the net and be harder for goalkeepers to save rather than using players that don't have the finesse shot right now I don't know what the percentages are of players attacking players that do have the finesse shot trait compared to ones that don't. Of course, the better players that we see in this game, for example, let's have a look at our attack right now on Mohamed Salah and also uh, Vinicius Jr. I have a feeling that all three of these cards will have the finesse shot trait. I will be shocked if Salah doesn't. He does have that one. And then Vinicius Jr. 
doesn't have that one. So this basically means here, taking finesse, shot, uh, taking finesse shots could still be very, very good with Vinicius Junior because he's still one of the best players in the game. But it's more likely to be better taken than with Mohamed Salah and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang because they've got that trait that makes them a little bit more effective because they're allowed to put more kill onto the ball, making it hard for goalkeepers to be able to react to them and how that the set and that and, and how the way that they will hit their finesse shots will be different to players like Vinicius Junior, to Emmanuel Petit, to Kevin De Bruyne. They will essentially just perform off it, but they're going to be more. Um, what's the word that I'm looking for? They're going to be more accurate and they're going to be more kind of lethal with their finesse shot traits on a more consistent basis compared to other players that don't carry the player traits. Now, another player trait that Aubameyang carried was the outside foot shot traits. So basically, these players can perform outside foot shots. It's as simple as that. Again, it's a nice little additional player trait to have. And obviously, you know, players that have got in particular with Pierre and with Aubameyang here, he's got the four star weak foot and having those two player traits is fantastic. It allows him to score different type of goals that, you know, if you have a striker that doesn't have the finesse shot trait or the outside foot shot trait, they won't be able to, um, to you know, to necessarily perform. The, they, first of all, won't be able to do an outside foot shot, which can be effective. It kind of allows to once again kind of confuse goalkeepers and gets the better of goalkeepers on certain occasions. Not always, but it does again give you an advantage. The two best player traits to have on a, on a proper striker are the finesse shot traits and the outside foot shot traits. Now, if a player doesn't carry those two traits, it shouldn't mean that it should put you off the card at, like completely. But, of course, if they do have them, it does make them a little bit better. Of course, things like, you know, skill moves and weak foots make more of an impact than what player traits do. But player traits, when being controlled by humans, like, like you know, myself and you guys watching, it still does make a little bit of a difference. And obviously, this Abomian card is fantastic in having those two traits. Now, another trait that he does have is solid player. And I had to make notes on these cards because I couldn't necessarily remember all of them off the top of my head. But basically, the sub player uh, reduces the chances of players getting injured during a collision. Now, one thing that we do know again in Ultimate Team is that during any live match against the opposition, players can kind of get injured and have the little injury bra come above them, where basically some of their stamina will go down. Um, a lot more quicker than for the rest of the game. Looks like a massive hit on stamina from, from my memory of that. That's what happens. But if I was to go and use this Aubameyang in squad battles and he was to get injured, you would then have to sub him off. That's how it works in squad battles. If you get a player that's injured, you actually have to, you're forced to make a change. If Aubameyang got that same type of injury in a live online match in Division Rivals for Champions or whatever, they wouldn't have to come off. They wouldn't be forced to come off. The game wouldn't pause itself and force you to make a substitution, but it would take a hit on their stamina. Having that player choice on Aubameyang benefits him because he's not going to get injured. Um, or, it, or it's not guaranteed, but it certainly reduces the chances of him getting injured during collisions. Other player traits to kind of keep an eye out for as uh, some of the more kind of beneficial ones. Power header is a very good trait to have again on attackers. Now, Aubameyang Bum doesn't carry the power header traits. You're more likely to see the power header traits from defenders. Now, uh, Diego Carlos hasn't got it, and actually Rafael Varane hasn't. I doubt Franco Baresi has it because he's absolutely tiny. Does Lukaku have the power header traits? He does. It's most likely to be carried from either strikers or from defenders, and it's a good trait to have again. Basically, these players are just going to be able to perform more powerful headers, making it, again, more difficult for goalkeepers to be able to save them. Uh, the more likely to be selected to fill target positions in the opposing opposition penalty area during attacking set pieces. So, you wouldn't have Lukaku staying on the edge of the box or something like that during an attacking set piece. He being the main danger area for allowing you to be able to cross balls into him, he'd be in that box having the power tra uh, power header trade. So it's a good trade to have because it means that these players are going to be in more better positions during attack and set pieces. And in general, we'll just perform more powerful headers, which is obviously good for being able to score goals in the game. So again, that's another nice player trade to have. You don't typically see it too often or not as much as kind of, a, you know, the finesse shot traits or the outside foot shot traits, but it's still there, which is pretty good. Another tra uh, trait to go through as well that I think is an important one is the flare trait. And this is obviously something they're going to see a lot more from midfielders, maybe wide players as well. And basically, these players are less likely to make mistakes when attempting to do skill moves in-game. Now, I'm pretty certain Vinicius Jr. would have the flair choice, and he does. So, he's already a five-star skill move player, which is fantastic. So, obviously, sometimes when you try to make skill moves, even with five-star uh, skill move players, sometimes you might make little mistakes when doing them. But by having the player traits of flair, it even further reduces the chance of when you're doing skill moves. You don't have to be... Uh, you know, a uh, hundred percent when attempting the skill move because it's it's less likely for the player to make a mistake when trying to attempt flare moves. They're also sometimes going to execute flare passes and flare shots as well. I'd say, for example, uh, I think if you go and watch my Vinicius Junior player review yesterday, I made a flare pass by him. All I did was tap the Y uh, on the Xbox controller, uh, which created a through ball through to a Bumiang. I didn't have to do anything different. The Y button is just the usual through ball button, but it created a flare pass. And you can go and have a look at that video. One of the high 
style it shows me providing that, that that type of flare pass and again it makes it a little bit more difficult for defenders being able to kind of execute those and it just looks better in game doesn't it and also flare shots as well you don't have to do necessarily anything different you could still hit the b button you know to go and make a shot with using the xbox controller obviously a different button what we're running on playstation but they're just more likely to execute those flare shots and flare passes you don't necessarily have to do anything different you're just going to be taking a normal shot or a normal pass but they'll just execute it for you differently it won't always happen it only happens on some occasions but even so it does look a little bit more cool in game uh injury prone um is also a player trait would Salah have that trait potentially i think de bruyne has got to have that trait Salah doesn't have it uh, Kevin De Bruyne does have it. This only really affects you uh, of getting an increased chance of getting injured during a collision. Early Crosser. Um, I looked on a website and Early Crosser actually is listed down as just being an AI only trait. It's not listed down as being a human control trait. Now EA here are listing it down as being a, a human control trait. But I couldn't find anything to, to see what that could actually do in game. So I'm not too sure what that one actually does. Now in terms of some of the traits for goalkeepers. This is very interesting. And it's to do with crosses. First of all cautious with crosses. Now I don't actually know what Dudek has got. He actually has got cautious for crosses. And this is a better trait to have. Basically these players will only try to intercept a cross. Even if they think. Um, even if they think they will. Hold on. Um, oh, no. That, that, I was looking at the wrong player trait there. Uh, will only try to intercept a cross when they think they can get to the ball before their opponent does. They're not going to make it a risky 50-50 where they don't know they're going to get there in time. Only when they know. And this is something that you wouldn't control. This is something that the goalkeeper would just control. But again, you want to have... Having a player trait like that is very, very good. A trait that you would want to avoid on a goalkeeper is comes for crosses. Because they will try to intercept the ball even if they think they will barely get to the ball before the opponent does. Now, I don't know what goalkeepers carry those player traits. But if you have a goalkeeper that has comes for crosses and they're going to be getting to the ball or, or they will try to intercept the ball barely before their opponent gets to it, that can lead to a lot of problems because that leads me to think that they're not always going to actually get to the ball. They might think that they can get there barely beforehand, but that that's a player trait that, at least in my personal opinion, you just do not want to have. Uh, I think having cautious for crosses is a very good player trait to have on a goalkeeper. And this has been quite a long video, coming up to 12 minutes now. But another player trait to mention is the leadership player trait. And basically, this just means... Um, these players are more likely to be selected as captains, uh, you know, um, the positions of authority, you know, taking uh, penalties and stuff like that as well. Um, because they've got the leadership traits, typically a leader in most teams will tend to take penalties as well in real football and stuff like that. Most leaders in, 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 in typical football teams as well will then obviously go and be the captain. It works similar again in an in, in ultimate team. Though those players are more likely just to be the captains. Uh, I think, um, I don't know if anyone on my team has actually got leadership. I don't think they have. I would assess, I would think that one of my midfielders would have it. De Bruyne has got it there, so he's more likely to be captain. Uh, Varane, weirdly, doesn't have it. I thought he would do, but um, but there we go, guys. That is how player traits work in FIFA 22. I know it's been a bit of a long video. I couldn't have really made it too shorter because you have to kind of... I need to fully explain how these traits worked. Uh, hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this video. It obviously makes it a bit interesting. Certainly for attacking players, I feel like traits kind of benefit the attacking players and goalkeepers the most, but make sure. I think the things to look out for, having the flare trait, the finesse shot trait, and that's a foot trait, are some of the really good traits to have on attackers. Uh, you know, power header for defenders, maybe even leadership as well. I guess it's just like a cool little mini thing to have. And then on goalkeepers, having cautious for crosses is very, very good. Ideally, I don't think I'd want to use a goalkeeper. Now, knowing this information, I don't think I'd want to use a goalkeeper now on that uh, comes for crosses. You'd still think on the whole it should still be safe, but there's just a little bit of an inkling for me behind that it could still lead to a few chaotic um mix-ups and maybe a few absolute howlers being conceded but uh, anyway guys hopefully you have enjoyed this video thank you for watching and i'll see you guys later